All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter. Hi. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's uh, weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics of interest to libraries. We are um, a webinar, uh, as they are called, or online show. Um, the show, whatever we are, the show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. And we do record the shows every week, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always go to our website and check out our archives and watch the shows at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives on our Encompass Live website. We do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. Um, in other states, it might be just called your like state library. Um, that's us. So we provide services and training and resources and grants, et cetera, et cetera, to all types of libraries in the state. So on our show, we will have things for publics, K-12, academics, um, museums, corrections, I don't even know what other kinds of special, any, anything, basically anything that is a library, we, we would have something potentially on the show um, about it. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products that we think might be uh, um, of interest to libraries. Uh, we bring it, we talk about things, sometimes we have library commission staff that come in to talk about services and things we're offering specifically here from in Nebraska. Um, but we also bring in guest speakers from across the state or across the, and across the country actually to talk about cool things they're doing at their libraries. Uh, today's show, we have uh, a mixture of commission and non-commission staff. <laughs> um, with, us, um, uh, with me today is Sally Snyder. Oh. She is our coordinator of children and young adult library services here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And remotely with us is Dana Fontaine. Good morning, Dana. Good morning. How are you? Hey, and she is from Fremont High School in in in, uh, in uh, Fremont, Nebraska. Uh, and this is the we'll call it annual. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Annual. Uh, for years now, Sally, um, with Dana and sometimes other librarians in the cross state, mm -hmm. does a uh, uh, duo <laughs> of sessions on best new children's books of a the previous year and best new teen book teen books of the previous year. Mm -hmm. um, and this is our children's one, the best new children's books of 2019. So discovering new books for the young and young at heart is the t is the official mm -hmm. title. Um, so this is all things that have come up out in the last year. And in a couple of weeks, in, in February, February 5th, I think. will be the companion session, if you are um, on Best New Teen Reads of 2019, February 5th. So if you if you do children's, today is your children's books. February 5th will be the teen. Um, so if you are a librarian doing um, either one of those, you know, attend both of them or the one that works for you. So I will hand it over to you, Sally, to take away and talk, talk to us about what you guys have for us today. Let me just get rid of And February 5th is National Read Aloud Day. Oh, is it? Yeah. It is what? Sorry, Sally didn't. It's National Read Aloud Day on February 5th. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. Why didn't I know that? Mm -hmm. Thank you for mentioning it. <laughs> now I have to read aloud during my that can I read team book. Yeah. Yes. Well, anyway, so okay. So here's the Library Commission homepage, and what I want to show you before Dana gets started on her list is where you can find the handouts. So you're looking at the page, and you go over here to this box. Ooh, click in there, and then type in the word handouts, and it pops up. So you can go there when you click. The top thing says Nebraska Library Commission handout. Click on that and whoops, get out of there. So far, it says by staff of Nebraska Library Commission. It could just say by Sally of the Nebraska Library Commission because so far I'm the only one putting things here. And that I, I'm happy to share this space because it's easy to search. But um, all of your things are there. Yeah. Okay, so our lists that we're going to talk about today are un because we did this presentation at the joint conference. Yeah, for those of you who know, yeah. this is um, um, this is sessions were originally done for 2019 at our Nebraska Library Association annual conference in the fall every year. This past year was a joint conference with right. Nebraska and Iowa. Um, so these are sessions that were done then, and then we always have um, them redone on our Encompass Live show. So anyone who wasn't able able to attend in person to the um, 
conference can still get the information from yeah. you guys. So there's one book list that after the title says Sally and one that says Dana. So we each have a PDF that you can download right now if you want to and be prepared for us to talk. These are, this is our presentation that we gave a conference and we're giving today. Now up above that it says 2019 best books and this is my longer list of all the children in, and um, early, early elementary and later elementary um, novels and nonfiction that I recommend for libraries to consider. So it's a, a longer list, but I won't be talking about that one today. I just wanted you to know where that is. And the teen book list will go under this when I'm done adding a couple more titles. Before February. Before February session. session. <laughs> anyway, so you can go here, find your book list, and um, be ready to, I better let you get the. Okay. All right. So we're going to switch over we're to Dana's, go to Dana's okay. presentation now. Here. And I'll be quiet and Dana can talk and tell me when to change the page. All right. We're going to, um, if anyone scans the QR code, you can follow along or add this to your drive or go to this bit.ly. Um, and you can just pull it up on your computer, but we're going to skip right along to hair love because hair oh. love. Hang on a sec. We got clicked into the wrong thing here. Hold on. Do we, do we have, did you have my list on there too? I, yeah. I think you did. I'm sorry. No, you're I, fine. Need to, I need to go down to your list then. Uh, okay. So, cause yours yeah. come up first in this presentation. I didn't realize um, this was both of our presentations. It is, oh, it's, it's fine. Um, if you go and just scroll down to Hair Love, it's, that's the beginning of my presentation. Sorry about that, everybody. No problem. We'll get there. Right. I think, right. Wait, no. Yeah, go back up. Because that's all too far. Yeah, go a little bit more. Right. So, that there. purple one right there. Get it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Hair Love. Hang on a sec. Okay. There we go. All right. This this is probably my all-time favorite. Well, this is my favorite children's book of 2019. I say all these books are my favorite, or I will say that a lot. So just just disregard all these books are great. So <laughs> <laughs> This book is diverse and sweet, and it's all about self-love and confidence. Um, the dad is actually the single parent in this household because the mom is gone, and the mom's gone for an extended period of time in this book, and you don't really find out why. If you watch the short that I included down here, the short is actually nominated for an Oscar. So yeah, It did. It, it just got an Oscar nomination. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, yes. And it, the short is brilliant, as is the book. And it's all about how a dad takes care of his daughter. And um, her hair is just wild and crazy. And so he tries to tame it and make it look good for when her mom comes home. And it kind of tells that journey. And how, and by the end, the dad's just exhausted. But the girl feels like a queen. She feels like a princess and a queen and she just feels so good about herself and so it's all about self-confidence and it's actually written by a former NFL player and it's really unique because it tells a dad's perspective of it all. Great. Next. Yeah. The next one is The Unteachables by Gordon Corman and of course can Gordon Corman write anything that's terrible? I don't think so. He's he's the best. And um, this book is funny and it's meaningful and it has a ton of twists and turns. And so there's this teacher, Mr. Kermit. He is kind of burnt out. I mean, there's probably no kind of about it. He's burnt out. And they kind of push him in the corner classroom and give him all the kids that everyone has given up on. And so he just kind of sits there and does word searches and crossword puzzles. And the kids are like, um, are we going to learn something today? And so this girl comes in, this girl student, and she's not really meant to be in this class. She is only going to be in the school for two weeks. And so she co comes in the class and she 
sits there and he never takes attendance. So he kind of just doesn't realize she's there. He just thinks she's supposed to be there. And he, and a new teacher who's kind of idealistic and moves in right next to him, moves in right next to the classroom next to him. And she's like, you know, you really should teach something. And they know each other. For, they know each other from a thing that I'm not going to tell you about. And no spoilers. And yes, yeah, spoilers. I know. I'm. I really want to tell you, but I'm not going to. Okay. So, um, Mr. Kermit, um, it his room number is like number one seventeen, and there's a lot of interesting characters called Elaine the Pain. And a lot of these kids just have a bad rap. They aren't bad kids. They just have bad reputations because mm -hmm. people have given up on them. And so Mr. Kermit finally starts to realize that, huh, if I just reinvigorate my love of teaching, then maybe these kids won't turn out so bad. Oh, it's, it's a really good one. And I think it's a Golden, golden Sower nominee for next year. I can't remember. I should have looked that up. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's fine. I, I should have put it in my notes. But all right. The next one that I'm going to talk about is Ghost Boys by Jewel Parker Rhodes. And it's very timely. It's sad and it's heart wrenching. Um, it's about Jerome. He's an African-American boy. He's 12, but he's dead. So the police mistook a toy gun he was playing with for a real gun. And this story is told from Jerome's point of perspective in the afterlife. And the catch is the policeman is, is in court. He's on trial for murder. And he's white. And his daughter is white as well. But his daughter is the only one that can see him. And so she kind of tries to talk to him and she's very resentful of her father after she learns the whole story and she kind of she she kind of starts to become this activist and it kind of has a little bit of an ex unexpected ending i wasn't expecting it to end the way that it did but it's very diverse and very good and it's very timely and also um emmett till and various other historical historical figures come into play and they kind of dodge a drone because this this also re reminds me a lot of um, Alfonso Jones, if you've ever read that one. Oh, yeah. And just to back up a minute, Krista oh, yeah. looked it up and the Unteachables is on the 2020-2021 mm -hmm. uh, Golden Sower list. Yep. So. Yes. Up for nomination, yes. Mm -hmm. Trace. I oh, I have a special place in my heart for scary books. They're they're my favorite. So there this one, Trace by Pat Cummings, is intriguing and it's spooky and it's diverse. So Trace uh, gets lost in the New York Public Library. So he lives with his aunt, who's a, a real free spirit, and he goes to meet his classmates there because they're they're going to work on a project. So he goes down into the basement and gets lost in the stacks and hears somebody crying. So he kind of investigates where where the crying is coming from and he sees a little kid and he can see through the kid, which isn't normal. And so he goes and tries to go get a security guard, but the security guard kind of puts him in this box and says, you must be causing trouble because he's also, he's black. And so, of course, you know, he thinks that he's causing trouble, but he's reporting an issue, not causing trouble. So his aunt comes in and then they determine who that little kid is and what the mystery is, along with the crying and the little boy. And it kind of incorporates with their project that they're researching. So which is a, which is really cool and something that happened during the Civil War. So it kind of flashes back sometimes. Wow. Yeah, I know it's it's really good. Yeah. All right. So granted, 
And I usually don't like fantasy, but I loved this book. I could not stop reading this book. It's the characters in this book are so awesome. It's fantastical and adventurous and fun. And it has a talking dog. Like, how could you not love a book with a, with a talking dog? So um, Haven, Haven is a place where all the fairies live. And there's a fairy oh, called oh, Ophelia, Ophelia Delphinium Fidget. And um, it's kind of a protective place. And these fairies have a job. They grant wishes. And so Ophelia is ready to go. She is ready to go grant some wishes. And she's finally sent on her first assignment. And it does not go as planned at all. It, it's a big old mess. And so she's, she follows the hum, which is the wish. And it's on a penny. And so this little girl's wishing for a bike. And so um, she's ready for the job and she goes, but then the penny gets put in somebody's pocket and then it gets thrown on, on the street. And then she meets this dog that takes her all over because she's a little fairy and, you know, she loses her communication device, device and it's just one thing after another. And so to see if the little girl gets her wish granted you can read Granted by John David Anderson. The next one is kind of creepy too in a realistic way. <laughs> this is realistic fiction and stuff like this really happens. It's about a religious sect down in New Mexico and it's about Gentry Forrester and she's a child of a polygamous commune in the mountains. And once a week, the prophet calls from his jail cell in Texas and gives orders. And one of these calls, someone rats out Gentry that she's being a little wild and extreme. She's playing her violin too much. And so, yeah, and so she is that uh, she, somebody takes her violin away, but she and her brother still want to go to this music festival. And so they kind of sneak out and go to this music festival. And then her father sees them. And she's not supposed to be out. But then she sees everybody and she thinks, hmm, they're not really like what the prophet says. They're not nearly as bad as what the prophet says. And so she kind of starts to realize that there's life outside of this. Mm -hmm. And she's she just kind of, you know, her beliefs are shaken. And so she's kind of trying to determine who to believe. And then people keep disappearing in her commune. And then she's promised to marry this 50-year-old. And because people think that, oh, I know what she needs. She must need somebody to marry. And so at 13, she's promised to this adult. And so to see if she escapes or not, and to see what happens, you can read the prophet calls. And then, again, I think I would put Erin and Trotta Kelly along with Gordon Gorman. Does she write anything that's terrible? I don't think she does. So this is another realistic fiction book, and she's an award-winning author. And stuff like this really happens in this book. So this is the story of Lottie and Ben, and it's told in alternating perspectives. Um, ben is picked on his, at his school, and he doesn't really notice he's picked on until middle school. And he wants to run for student body treasurer. And he doesn't realize he's alone until he starts running and he realizes he doesn't really have any true friends, which is super sad. And the competitive girl in his grade is also running. And it's about time that his parents announce a divorce and all of this family drama happens while he's trying to do something good within the school. Um, ben turns really bitter at his father, and Lottie is also going through hardships as well. And her dad is older than most, and he has a heart attack. And her best friend ditches her and says horrible things. And she finally makes a friend and stands up for what is right. And Ben and Lottie kind of come together by playing this online Scrabble game, kind of similar to Words with Friends. But they mm -hmm. talk to each other and confide in each other and really define what true friendship is no matter if they're across the United States or if they're right next to you. Hmm. And so Ben and Ben and Lonnie don't really know what they mean to each other to, near until the end of the book. All right. The next one is also my all-time favorite. It's scary, the yeah. e. Schwab, and it is also on the 2020 or 
2020-2021 Golden Silver list. Or is it 21-2022? I don't know. I think it's one of those. All right. So um, it's really scary. So, yeah. Oh, 2020. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 2020. <laughs> so V.E. Schwab is a genius these books are so engrossing and they're really a readable length i think they're like around 200 250 pages so they're not like ginormous um cassidy blake is behind a veil the veil is between the living and the dead so cassidy blake can see ghosts and she almost she almost died and that's how she met her best friend jacob but her best friend jacob is a ghost so he's also just kind of alive as Cassidy is kind of dead and she can communicate with them and sometimes cross over to the living to the land of the dead and her parents are the inspectors her dad is super skeptical of everything but her mom is this um spiritual person who who goes and talks her dad into doing this tv show where they go and go to various places around the world and ghost hunt and her parents do not know that she can see actual ghosts. And so if they knew, she would probably be very useful to them. Um, they travel around the world and Cassidy travels with her ghost friend. She travels to the United Kingdom where she meets another girl like her and they get into some trouble and they get into this dangerous situation um, where they might not get out of. But there's and, a book too. Yep, yep. Book two is Tunnel of Bones. So mm -hmm. Tunnel of Bones is the, and then the third one is coming out this September, September 2nd, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. The next one. What? Yeah. Which you mentioned too, for those of you who are not from Nebraska and don't know, we we're talking about the Golden Sower mm -hmm. nominees. Mm -hmm. um, the Golden Sower Award is um, Nebraska's Children's Choice Literary Award. Um, kids in schools and and libraries, go to school or libraries can vote. So it's the children, um, the kids choose what they think are the best books out of these lists that are nominated. So those of you who are not from Nebraska and aren't aware, um, that, that's what we have here in the state. And um, there's the 2020, 2021 <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, nominees are up and voting is open through Friday, April 17th. It was extended because of the Easter holiday weekend was kind of messing with the mm -hmm. schedule on that. So uh, just so that you know. So that's for the 2019 to 2020 list that they're voting on now. Oh, okay. And then the 2020 to 2021 list is for next for next year. year. Okay, right. Um, but the they have that up. up so libraries can, can be getting the books. Plan ahead. ahead. Okay, so you're voting. Yeah, not, uh, voting is now open for the 1920. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just for those of you who didn't know what we meant, we kept talking about the Golden Sower Award. <laughs> Good point. Thank you. Yeah. And Sally and I are both on the committee for that, and so it's kind of it's kind of our passion. <laughs> All right, so 24 Hours of Nowhere reminds me a lot of Holes. And for those of you that are searching for books about like biking and BMX, this is the book for you because I've had to buy it numerous times for students because there's not a whole lot of books out there that are fiction that are about BMX bikes. And so this is about, this is in the desert, it's set in the middle of nowhere, hence the name 24 Hours of Nowhere. And, um, This story is about Gus, it is, and it's located in Arizona. It's a typical desert town, except for the bully, Bo Taylor. He is just big and mean. And he bets his friend, um, well, actually, Bo tries to make Gus eat a cactus, and Gus is like, do I really have to eat a cactus? And Bo says, yes, you can either eat a cactus or give me your BMX bike. And that's like the only thing that Gus owns is his BMX bike. Cause he had all of his other stuff was like hand-me-downs and you know, second hand. And this is the only thing that's his outright. Rossi is Gus's best friend who's a girl and she's also a BMX biker. And she trades her prized possession, her BMX bike. So Gus doesn't have to eat the cactus. And so Gus feels horribly guilty. So he has heard of treasure in the mountains around him. So he goes, at midnight and go, tries to go into the caves and find the treasure so he can buy Rossi's bike back. But then Rossi and Bo catch up to him 
and they kind of become friends and try to team up because they get lost in this cave system and they find so many interesting finds mm. and i'm not i'm not going to to spoil it but they find like they battle bobcats glowing shrimp and the lake of bones wow. so that's only some of the things that they find <laughs> All right, The Unsung Hero of Birdsong USA. This is historical fiction and it's very diverse and it's all about small town living. So Gabriel is a proud, proud owner of a new bike. He accidentally rides it into traffic and so he is brought to safety by Meth Meriwether, an older African-American man. And Meriwether fixes the bike and Gabe gives him a job at his father's mechanics or his father's garage because his dad is a mechanic. And some people at the shop are super not welcoming to Meriwether. They're like, get out of here. Like, what are you doing here? And Gabe's father is super cool with everything and defends Meriwether because Meriwether really saved Gabe's life. And they cause trouble and they, the townspeople try to run Meriwether off, but then, but then some people have a change of heart. And the next one is the season of Sticks Malone. Kikla Meg Megoon is an award winner and she's the NAACP Image Award winner. And she won that for the Rock and the River. And this is great for middle grade because, you know, kids at that age are kind of testing their boundaries. And that's what the kids in this story do. So Styx Malone doesn't, he's a foster kid and he doesn't really have any guidance. And so he, he's kind of like a smooth talker and tries to get these kids to do things that they wouldn't normally do. And Caleb and Bobby Jean are the brothers and their father is extremely overprotective. He wants to stay in the small town. He won't let them go to a city at all. And they really want to explore. And Caleb and Bobby Jean are bored and they're so ready for adventure. And Styx Malone is right there ready for, for them. And he just appears one day and he's very charismatic. And it turns out um, he lives in the woods and he tried to hide it from the boys. He thought he, like he told them that he lived in this big house and he had this big life of adventure. And they found the bicycle or they find this bicycle and Dick's got this idea to trade for it, but this bicycle is like thousands of dollars. I mean, it, it's expensive. I don't know if it's thousands. I think it's like, it's expensive. And he gets this idea to trade the paperclip to, for a pencil and then the pencil for something else. And then a lunchbox for something else. And so they try to trade up for this bike and his mom kind of gets fed up. Caleb and Bobby Jean's mom, and she's like, I do not want you hanging out with them at all, ever. But then, but then Styx Malone kind of redeems himself, but then he disappears. So, so if you want to read that, read The Season of Styx Malone by Kiklin Magoon. The next one is actually nonfiction, and it has great interesting pictures and facts, and it's World War II adjacent. So World War II is just kind of like a footnote in this, in this book instead of like the main theme. And it's very interesting. It's a nonfiction story. It's how the controversial radio broadcast of War of the Worlds almost brought down the United States. And I didn't even realize how true that pe what people thought this radio broadcast was. Mm -hmm. People were like killing themselves because panic. they thought the aliens, that they were being invaded. Yes, full on panic, yes. Yes, full on panic, <laughs> yeah. And so, but and people would go out to the site where this, the aliens supposedly landed and there was nothing and people were still panicking. So it's very interesting to see the level of panic that people felt and what they actually thought in this book. 
Okay, the next one is Mercy Suarez changes gears. Mercy Suarez isn't really having the best of years. She's a real leader, but she's a scholarship student at a ritzy private school, And but this doesn't bother her. She has friends, and what bothers her is the fact that her dad has to do odd jobs around the school, and some of the snoots around the school are like, ew, your dad. Your dad is a janitor, and the most popular girl in the grade finds out, and she starts treating Mercy, Mercy differently, and combine this um, with the fact that her grandfather is becoming super forgetful and absent-minded, almost like he is losing his memory, like Alzheimer's, and to find out what happens, you can read in Mercy Suarez, Changes Gears. Time Bomb, they call this a dystopian, but I think it's a mystery. Um, it's about, it's realistic fiction, kind of, like it's in the near future, like very near. Like it could be next year, you know, and it's diverse and it says it's just so, but I think it's more mystery because a group of teens is hurt and trapped after a series of bombs go off in their school. And mm -hmm. this was before school starts and evidently, and this is like in the summer when people are getting back to school, they're working on the yearbook. Um, one of the bombers is trapped in the school with them and they don't know who the bomber is. And so, of course, there's this Muslim kid that everyone thinks, oh, it's this Muslim kid, but he's not, he doesn't have any part of it. And the ending will shock you. You probably won't see it coming. Um, the book tries to make it seem like each student could have been the bar. So there's Diana, Diana, the senator's princess, Frankie, the quarterback, Tad, who's biracial and part of the LGBTQ community, and Cass, the girl who came to the school looking for a way out the hard way. So, and Rashid is also there. He's the one everyone thinks did it, but I don't know if he did. <laughs> you have to read it to find out. I really like this. Joelle Charbonneau wrote, really writes some good stuff. All right, Surfside Girls are just some fun, fluffy graphic novels. They're fun beachy reads. Scooby-Doo meets Babysitter's Club meets like a Raina Telgemeier. Yay! Good story, yes. <laughs> it, has, it has something for everyone. And there's so, two so far? Yep, there's two so far. And the third's coming out pretty soon. So um, it has, re it's received mixed reviews, but I liked it and my kids really liked it. And they read, like, they love graphic novels and some of them are really hard to please and they liked it. So um, the graphic novel was about, is about Jade and Samantha and Jade is growing up and noticing boys, but Sam's number one priority is surfing and just hanging out and being true to herself. And she starts to feel a little left out, but then something happens and she starts seeing ghosts, not scary ghosts, but the ghosts are kind of calling out to her because they need help because the, the this big development company wants to come in and develop the sacred ground and just to big build a big hotel. And so, yes, it would bring a lot of jobs, but Sam kind of feels torn about that. Mm -hmm. So one of the ghosts takes liking to Sam and she kind of develops a crush on him. And she show and that ghost shows her where the treasure treasure's buried in a ship shipwreck. It kind of reminds me of the Goonies a little bit. Oh, and yeah. just, kind of, mm -hmm. just kind of how all the events. So Sam and Jade get a lead that the P.O. box office of the development is being fraudulently fraudulently used. And so they stake out the post office and they go on this big investigation and learn who the real mystery person is and who's to blame for the actual development. And they all band together as townspeople to talk about the development and the thief and crook is found out. Okay. Cool. All right, yeah. The next one is Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me. This one's so sad. I felt I feel really bad. And this is for older middle. The next couple are for older older students. And so, this is um, an LGBTQIA plus graphic novel, and it's very sad. And it's about Laura Dean is popular, and she's one of the popular girls, but she kind of dangles herself in front of Frederica Riley and Frederica is so in love with her. She's the one for Frederica, but Laura Dean just kind of uses her. And just kind of leads her. It does not help that Laura um, gets cheating on Frederica numerous times. And so she just kind of tries to process her feelings 
but um, Frederica then visits a fortune teller for advice on how to proceed with this conundrum. And the fortune teller is like, really? Like, you need to move on. Or maybe you need to love yourself first. So, so if you are interested, read Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. My students love this book a lot. So mm -hmm. it's, it's never in the library because it's always checked out. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Yes. All right, kiss number eight. So what's the big deal with kissing? So this book has some milder, like some adult, like, like sophomore, junior, senior kind of themes in it. So I guess this would be maybe more the young adult section, but this is about, I think, I think her name is Kate and she has kissed seven people. And then on her eighth kiss, her world is just blown. Her mind is just blown. And she's like, oh, hmm, maybe I'm not the person I thought I was. And then her dad also has a secret. And so there's these two big secrets in the book. And it's a graphic novel. Both of these, Laura Dean and this one, um, kiss number eight, keep, keep kind of I mean, they're graphic novels that kind of, they kind of fit in the same category. And so these two big secrets are like, you know, hinting at a big explosion later on in the book. Mm. All right. And the next one is Breakout by Kate Messner. So Wolf Creek is kind of a sleepy town and there's only two jobs that you can have in Wolf Creek. Either you can work at the school or you can work at the prison. And so this new girl comes into town, Elodie, and it's a rumor that her dad is incarcerated at the prison. And so Nora writes for the school newspaper, and so she's trying to build this time capsule and for Wolf Creek for somebody to open like 50 years later. And so she tries to fill it up with text messages and notes and little bits of paper. And that's kind of what the, how the format of the book is told. And so it's really kind of interesting. It's like 450 pages, but it does, it does not take long to read at all. And so it goes pretty fast and everyone starts these rumors about LED, but then two, two men break out of the prison and everyone thought they were safe but now everyone's just shaken to their core. All right, and then the last one that I'm gonna talk about is called The Benefits of Being an Octopus. And it's, <laughs> what was that? I'm oh, just, okay. No, so it's, it's, it's cute. <laughs> it's super cute, yes. Um, it's realistic fiction and it's very sad. And there's lots and lots and lots of animal facts, but Zoe overhears, okay, so Zoe lives with her mom and her sister and her boyfriend, and her mom's boyfriend and her boyfriend's father. So they're all in this trailer and they're, it's packed in there and Lenny is very mean to her mom. And she just, Zoe wishes her mom would just stand up to him and just leave. And she's like, mom, you're being abused. And she's like, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And Zoe's like, no, you're not fine. You're, I mean, I, and her mom depends on Zoe a lot to take care of everybody and to take care of the household. And Zoe's not very old. She's like 12. And her best friend Fuchsia is acting weird as well. And so she's, and she just wishes she had the hands of an octopus because she wishes she could do eight things at once. And she mm. imagines that if she had eight arms, she could do, do everything at once. And so she, she finally talks to her mom and gets it through her mom's head that this isn't the healthiest situation. And so her mom decides to deal with it. Yeah. Very happy books, I guess. But <laughs> I mean, they have their redeeming qualities. <laughs> All right. And that is the last book that I have. Sally, okay. do you just want to use this one? Do you just want to use this presentation or do you have another one? I'll just use this one. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so what I'm we'll going to do is going to go right, go right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
then you should be to yours. There you go. Thank you, Dana. Those are all fascinating. I've read some of them, but you had some. Of course, I haven't seen yet, so I have more reading to do. <laughs> I have to finish this first, though. <laughs> so I'm doing the picture books and early chapter books uh, list, so we'll get started. Um, this is uh, book two. The first one was just called Peter and Ernesto, and this is um, The Lost Sloth. It's a graphic novel format in a picture book. It's humor and survival, like it says up there. A hurricane hits the jungle and the tree in which Peter and Ernesto and their four friends live. In the morning, they're okay, but the surrounding area, their tree and the surrounding area is flattened. Mm. So they go off together on an adventure to find a new tree to live in, because sloths spend most of their time in the same tree. They need trees. <laughs> Along the way, they encounter a band of peccaries, more than once, who are chanting, Jaguar, Jaguar. And they're looking, they're not seeing any jaguar in the area, so they're not sure what the peccaries are about. Oh. Mm -hmm. But they do run into, they run from snakes, they sit in the mud to get rid of biting ants, and they meet a friendly bird. Who else might they encounter? Will they find their new home? And will they avoid the jaguar if there really is one? I'm looking forward to more tales about Peter and Ernesto and their friends. Can you spoil it? it? What is the jaguar? There really is a jaguar at the end of the book. Yeah. The peccaries were right, <laughs> but they defeat him That's very okay. cleverly. Yeah. Good. So, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I love this one. Nobody has. Okay. Hank the cactus lives in a pot on a windowsill, and he is content to be left alone. Rosie the tumbleweed always calls hi to him when she tumbles by. She's very friendly. <laughs> a passing cowboy man just said, the cactus needs a hug, but nobody hugs a cactus. Hank ponders this for a while. Maybe a hug would be okay. But while he's there, a cup gets stuck on one of his spines. It's a windy day, and, and Rosie knocks it off for him on her way by. So that was very nice of her. And Hank finds a way to thank her. It's great illustrations of a grumpy Hank. And while we have recently had new books about a porcupine and a hedgehog needing hugs, this title sends a wonderful me message of caring and being positive. And Hank, you know... He's, he's getting a little more positive <laughs> by the end. Yeah. Well, sorry. Go ahead and talk when you want to, Dana. No, I love the illustrations of the Nobody Hugs a Cactus. I mean, I love the cactus one. It's, it su it's such a great grumpy look on him. Look at his face. He is, he is yeah, yeah. determined to be grumpy. <laughs> and nobody, you know, the bird flies by, I don't want to talk to you. Things like that. Monkey time is fun. The stylized tree that the monkey lives in has branches that stretch out from the center to the edges. And, and at the top straight up, there is a little hole. And out of that hole comes a small yellow creature that entices the monkey to play. I bet you can't catch a minute as it begins its way around the tree. Once all of the yellow creatures have finished going around the tree, that's one hour, yeah. they leave and a new group of little green creatures come out. So this is a great title to reinforce learning the concept of time with minutes and hours on an analog clock, as that's what it's set up to do. But it's also a lot of fun. The artwork is great, and um, of course it's Michael Hall. So again, there are authors and illustrators who we just naturally gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. Your favorite? Well, they do good work. Yeah. This is a great idea. In rhyming text, a girl talks about her different family members and what they look like in their own homes without their hijabs. She also talks about how each woman has one that fits her personality. So they're, they're different according to what the individual is like. For example, her grandmother wears one that clasps under her chin and is carefully folded. And her aunt wears a silky one with a handmade jewel. Mm -hmm. And her aunt's hair is streaked with pink and purple under her hijab. Mm -hmm. It's a recognition of women being their own persons and setting an example for the girl telling the story. It's very upbeat and positive. And I'm sure kids wonder... What do you look like underneath yeah. that? So you can see that in this book. Giraffes are some of my favorite animals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> a young giraffe plays hide and seek with her older brother. When, when looking for him, she asks different animals if they have seen him, giving one characteristic of her brother. Each time it's a different characteristic. And if you look there, along the bottom, there's a tail sticking up. Keep an I eye didn't on notice that. that. Oh, Keep an yeah. eye on that tail. Let's see. Um, she says he's tall, or he has lots of spots, or he's fast. And the animals say, well, but you're like that too. And she begins to realize mm -hmm. she does have those characteristics. 
just in time to confront the leopard that has been stalking her. Uh. Young listeners will see her older brother following along her behind her and hiding to be sure she's safe. <laughs> it's delightful with beautiful illustrations. Plus, giraffe. Yes. How can that be? That? <laughs> oh, I wanted to say that I followed Dana's format. She was the one that thought of putting up these, these bullet points about what's important about mm -hmm. the book. I thought, well, that's a great idea. So I copied you, Dana. Thanks. Thank you. Loving parents invite their young daughter to put her hands up for a hug, to celebrate, to get dressed, to play peekaboo, for high fives, and many other fun and loving ways to hear these words that sometimes are fearful, and threatening. Mm. It is an exuberant, colorful, and positive book, and the story ends with a community march of people carrying positive signs. Yay. So it doesn't have to be scary. Mm. Sylvia loves to write poetry, so on a spring day, she writes a lovely one, and she ties it to the birch tree in the park. The next morning, she finds a different poem tied to the tree, and she thinks it's from the tree. <laughs> Soon enough, she learns that a boy in her class, Walt, thinks the tree is his tree. Uh, they soon get past the ownership idea and begin to share poems under the tree. Kirkus says, a sweet and quiet homage to friendship, nature, and the power of words and poetry. Nice. I like the title, even how the title's written. Poetry, poetry. Yes. poetry. It's very clever. And what was funny about that book, I read that to an English class, and each name in there is a name of a poet, of a famous poet. Oh, oh, good point. <laughs> I am so slow. Sneaky. <laughs> no, it, it took me like three reads before I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man. This is uh, the first book in a new imprint, Pixar Animation Studios Artist Showcase. So keep an eye out for more of these if you're interested in Pixar mm -hmm. Animation Studio Artists. This book takes place in Malaysia. Aliyah and her mother who she calls Mami Sayang, which means dear mother in her language. They live in a small village or a kampung. When her mom becomes ill, Aliyah shows her love for her mother with a flower and a statement. Inshallah, I will always be by your side, as her mother had often said to her. Family love, support, and connectedness is celebrated. And yes, her mother does recover. So it's um, that's a, a nice ending, too, because could have been bad. I love this one. This is such a great... Tradition. This is a Navajo, based on a Navajo tradition, told by um, a Navajo uh, illustrator, and I believe the author, the original author, was Navajo. Um, Tahe, Roseanne Tahe, has passed away, and Nancy Bow Flood helped finish creating this book so that it could be printed and give the first author spot to the lady who passed away. Anyway, um, the welcoming of a new baby to an extended family. Each family member tries to be the one to cause the baby's first laugh. So whoever, aunt or, or cousin or whoever's playing with the baby, they're really hoping they get the first laugh because that person will host the child's first laugh ceremony. And it's an honor to be able to do that. It's a wonderful look at a new life, laughter, family, and community. I think it's just a terrific book. Okay, the panda problem. This book's narrator is thrown when he says, the panda had a big problem. And the panda says, nope. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> you have to have a problem to solve in order to be a story. So the panda decides to be the narrator's problem, and things get crazy. Kids will enjoy making up their own problem book after hearing this one. Because what is this? Oh, I won't even go there. I was going to do the Smothers Brothers when Dickie told Tommy to take it, and he said no. <laughs> My family grew up on this mother's brother. Sorry. Okay, I have a few beginning readers, and this one is amazing. I, I'm astounded. This is a monkey and cake book. This is book one of three. It's a look at the concept of Schrodinger's cat for the very young set. And by the huh. way, just so you know, both monkey and cake love pie, because pie comes up. This is a <laughs> Wall Street cake Journal pie. said. This. I thought it was cake versus pie. Which one do you like well, better? It could be that. <laughs> they love pie, monkey loves That's pie, and they have some at the end of the book. So they talk about what's in this box, and it could be this, it could be that, it could be something else. And, and all, it's the concept of Schrodinger's cat. And uh, Wall Street Journal said this is full of philosophical inquiry. And I can read picture books. Books. children. books? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So book two, Monkey Kate, <laughs> is about ownership and sharing. 
is a look at uh, that. Cake says he owns the area where his fort he's built is. Nobody else can be there. This is my area. And he is not going to share with Monkey or anybody. So Monkey says his fort is made up of all the other space in the world. <laughs> That's yours. The rest of everything is mine. Okay, well, they have to work on uh, finding a compromise, which Obvious, they apparent, ultimately do, yes. <laughs> but yes, that is a concept. Um, book three came out in September, and I don't even know what the title is because I didn't go check on it. So there is a book three, and it's another um, concept of this style type of book, and maybe um, Krista can find it for me while we go on ahead to Rappy and his favorite things. This is the second book that Dan Gutman has written about Rappy. Ah, I found it. Oh, she found it. My Tooth is Lost. Oh, My Tooth is Lost. It's book three of Monkey and King. Okay. And I, I have um, a Monkey Loses a Tooth. So Monkey Loses a Tooth in book three, My Tooth is Lost. So I, love, I love how Cake's a character. I love how. <laughs> monkey has lost a tooth. This makes Monkey sad. Cake reassures Monkey that the tooth fairy will come, but Monkey isn't so sure. Can Cake help find the lost tooth instead? No, possibly. So it looks like there's just three so far. I assume there'll be more if they're yeah, doing well. Could yeah. very well be. So back to Rappy. He does not want to write a poem in school. No, it's just boring. Soon enough, he is, his teacher goes out of the room, and he is rapping instead about many of the things he likes. Imagine his surprise when their teacher, Mrs. H, tells him rapping is poetry. Uh, yeah. He was already making poems, and he's, he and he can't be surprised. Now, these two books so far, they are completely written in rap timing, rap, um, mm -hmm. uh, not lingo, but what am I trying to say? Cadence. Rap yes, cadence. cadence, yes. I am not good with that, so I cannot read this out loud. But <laughs> many, many other people can, can do that. Practice cadence. it is yeah. a good idea. Make sure, so yeah. practice if you want to read it aloud. But it's an I can read book, too. And I love these series of books by uh, Milgram. Where am I? Oh, I have to turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> These are about Ollie, the robot. But today, in this one, if you look at the at the cover, you can see, oh, Ollie, it's Otto, the robot. Ollie, the rhino, is in a bad mood. But Otto, the robot, doesn't know that. He doesn't pick up on the on the expression on on Ollie's face. Does it, he yells hi to Ollie's back, and Ollie chases Otto, and they run right through the monkey flip and flops artist area. Now Flip and Flop are in a bad mood, and they are chasing Ollie and Otto. They stop when a lightning storm start, starts up. Ollie says, hop on, and the three ride Ollie out of the storm. Everyone is in a good mood now. I really like this, because these are very good early, early beginning reader books, because mm. they're told in brief rhyming phrases and short phrases. And this one is a good uh, look at anger and handling emotions. Mm. And there's it's a series of books, so you can look for the other ones. This is hilarious. I know, I'm so what? excited for this one. <laughs> what, what did you say, Miss What, what, what? Did you... Oh, I'm super excited for this one. I oh. love these. <laughs> Harold and Hog decide to pretend for real to be Elephant and Piggy. Hog has a hard time being Piggy since Piggy is carefree and loves to dance. Hog is too careful. And he suggests that Harold is too extroverted to be elephant, even if he puts on some pretend glasses. The answer, Hog can be elephant and Harold can be piggy, because those personalities match up oh. better. And so it's just a lot of fun about um, elephant and piggy, whose, whose run has ended, but another way to visit them, kind of. And I love the pretend for real. <laughs> yeah. That is such fun. Um, so nonfiction picture books. This is a picture book linked poem honoring the many well known African American people who were successful and or stood up for the rights of all. Nice. Beautiful oh, illustrations by Kadir yeah. Nelson. Each person is identified at the back of the book and given one brief paragraph about his or her life. It's a celebration of African Americans and of humanity. It's a great addition to your collection. Well, I'm an animal fan. Giraffes were kind of at the top of my list, but <laughs> this has 13 poems, as it says, and it's about animal sounds. What kind of noise does a moose make? Looks like they make a bellow. Two voices are indicated by the color of the text, so you could do a. Um, it's reminiscent to me of Joyful Noise, the 2005 or so Newbery winner, where it was poems for two people to read. 
two people could read this together and um, you know which part is yours by the color of the text. And there, there is added information at the back of the book about each of the animals included. And I love camouflage books. And this, of course, this is Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. It has wonderful art and animal camouflage is something kids love too. There are tidbits of information at the back as it says, but you have all different kinds of animals included in here. You should, this is on ocean floor and I think there's an octopus on this cover if I remember right. Um, and at the back of the book there are more notes about the different animals. So again, it's, it's a beautiful illustration. You have to look to find the animal or animals mm. and then you get some more information. Some early chapter books. This is by Tom Engelberger, who has written the, um, wait a minute, Inspector Flytrap. It says right there. Well, in this book, the very first thing is Inspector Flytrap is on vacation because his mom came to visit, so he's not available to help solve <laughs> the street. But Dee Dee Dodo, future spy, is available. And this, of course, um, oh, is so silly. Poor Coco Dodo needs help. His super secret fudge sauce has been stolen and it is time for the annual Queen's Royal Cookie Contest. Who can help? Didi Dodo. Hilarious, silly antics abound, including traveling too fast via roller skates, escaping a herd of angry yaks, because how often do we run into that, and sliding through the mall to get to the cookie contest. Fans of Inspector Flytrap will feel right at home with this one. And I don't know if there's been another one out yet or not, but that's the first one in that too. This is the first book about Frankie Sparks, Third Grade Inventor is the name of the series. And this is one is about the class pet. Frankie is enthusiastic about experiments and she loves science and math. Her class is going to get a pet and they will vote on what kind they want. Frankie is sure a rat will be the best choice and keeps trying to convince her best friend to vote rat. But Maya wants to vote for a hermit crab and she is beginning to feel that Frankie is not listening to her opinion. <laughs> In the meantime, Frankie has to invent something that will allow the rat to be fed over the weekend when no one is at school, or they can't have a rat. It has to be mm. something that nobody has to take care of over the weekend. Nobody takes home. Yeah. yeah. But she does work on this. <laughs> Soon there are some misunderstandings, but things come right in the end. It's a good start to a new series with science in the forefront. And these are fun. This is the first... Um, Compilation. I think that the, these individual chapters came out separately at first, but this is this is a four-story compilation about Yasmin and her Pakistani American family and her school. She is in second grade, and her imagination is her tool for solving problems. She is creative, and she stands confidently when challenged. The stories in this book are titled Yasmin the Explorer, Yasmin the Painter, Yasmin the Builder, and Yasmin the Fashionista. Mm -hmm. And the sequel is called Yasmin in Charge, which I read recently, and that's also a good, it has four stories in it, as this one does. Mm -hmm. So that's also a good choice. And I think that's the end of my list. Yes, because then we're back to here love. All right. So again, the book lists are on the Library Commission webpage if you search handouts. Mm -hmm. you and what more? we will do, too, um, if anybody has any questions or comments or book suggestions you have, um, feel free to share them in the, in the question section, or you can always reach out to Sally or Dana at their respective pieces of work. Um, we will also link to uh, this presentation. Uh, I'm going to hit escape. Okay. Um, there was, I know, Dana, you put at the very uh, first slide the um, uh, the bit.ly, the short yeah, the, link there, yeah. too. So <laughs> if you can go yourself there. But we'll also add that to the um, sessions to the page when I put up the archive as well, so you have a quick access to that, too. Awesome. And you can scan the QR code too if you if you want. Yep. So many options. Yeah. If you have a phone that can do that. Right. So many options. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are old fashioned. Yeah. Um, all right. Looks like we just got some people saying thank you for the session and great ideas. And um, we all have lots of reading to do now. <laughs> yes, I do too. Uh, so I think that wraps it up. We're just pretty much almost exactly on time for our wrapping up for today. We started a little after 10 a.m. Uh, central time. So mm -hmm. thank you, uh, Dana and Sally, for sharing all these titles with us. Yeah. Um, as we did mention on the web page, there is um, Sally. You have a longer list. Yeah, we have that still here somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, this is the one that's. that's so um, these two here are the ones that you just saw today. Right. 
but this is even more titles added to it. That I yeah. Beyond what was meant yesterday. So if you're looking for other titles, check that out as well. Yeah. Get more ideas. So that will um, so um, that will wrap up for today's show. Thank you everybody for attending today. Thank you. Um, we're going to go to the Encompass Live website now. You can go, you can search on the commissions page, but if you just go into whatever your search engine of choice is and type in Encompass Live, the name of our show, go ahead and hit enter. So far, we are the only thing going on on the internet. <laughs> Nobody is allowed to, to um, call themselves that yet. <laughs> Nobody's chosen it yet. So. Um, let me just see here. I've got some people. Thanks for the great webinar and letting us know about all these wonderful books. People are saying, yeah. So this is our Encompass Live page where you can see here's our upcoming shows for the next um, actually January and February. Um, and right underneath them is where you can access uh, the archives of our shows. So if you click on that, the most recent ones are always at the top of the list. This is last week's show. So today's will be up there. Should be um, available by the end of the day today as long as YouTube and GoToWebinar, everybody cooperates with me. Um, everyone who attended this morning or registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the archive is available. It will also be promoted out on our Twitter feed, Facebook page, the usual places out there, um, mailing lists that we have here in Nebraska. Uh, we'll have a link to, I'll just show you from last week's show, we'll have a link to the recording on our YouTube channel and there will also be a link to the handout. Um, the handouts page that has those uh, PDFs, and then there'll be a third link to the uh, Google Slides that have both uh, Sally and Dana Slides all together will be here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just mention too, while we are here on our archives page, we do a search feature here. This is the entire archives of Encompass Live. Uh, there, uh, you, see you can search our full archives, or you can just look at the most recent 12 months if you want to. Um, Encompass Live premiered in January 2009, so we're going on our 11th, 12th year. We've been around for over 10 years. So there's a lot of archive here. Um, but we are librarians, so we save and archive and keep things for historical purposes. So these will always be available here. But do pay attention. You know, run a search on the top if you want to search. Pay attention to the pub the date that it was originally broadcast, though. Some things may be old, outdated information. Uh, services or products mm -hmm. might not exist anymore, or they may have changed since we talked about them. Um, on the show, so um, just pay attention when you are searching on here um, for things. Some of our topics are always going to be good and appropriate, like best new team books for you know 2015 are still going to be good to share today. They're just not new anymore. Um, but so um, you can do that, or if you just want the most recent up-to-date info, just limit it to just searching the most recent 12 months. Um, we also do have a Facebook page, um, as mentioning for for Encompass Live. If you do like to use Facebook, we post reminders here. A um, couple times a week, here's a reminder for no, I don't want to log in right now. Thank you, Facebook. A reminder to log in for today's show. When our recordings are available, I post on here. Other things of interest to um, uh, libraries. So um, if you do want to give us a like over on Facebook to keep an eye on what we're doing there. Uh, so that's all for today. I hope you join us next week when it is our Pretty Sweet Tech session for the month. Uh, Pretty Sweet Tech is our monthly uh, session done by Amanda Sweet, who's a technology innovation librarian here at the National Library Commission. Generally, it's the last Wednesday of the month. That's what we try to stick to, but sometimes it has to be adjusted due to other scheduling issues. So this week, it's, it's one uh, week. This month, it's one week ahead. Um, and next week, should we talk about technology solving real world problems? So if you are um, into tech, are you the techie person at your library, keep an eye on her um, pretty sweet tech sessions that she'll be doing on the show. Um, and also you can see our other sessions here are all set up, and you'll see more appearing for March and April as I start nailing down and confirming dates for things. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you very much, Sally and Dana. And we'll see you. Um, oh. Here's that the new teen session. We talked about this at the beginning for those of you. Um, today was the children's books. Best new teen reads will be on February 5th, and that's just Sally on your own <laughs> for that day. So if you are your the, the children's through all the way up to teens type person at your library, you can watch the companion piece to today's show, the teen reads one on um, June on February 5th for that one. Now that wraps it up. So, okay. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you uh, another time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Dana. Yeah.